So yeah, I uh, am part of BSM.co, which is a company that's really focused on creating uh, collaborative tools for adult education. Um, and so I'm going to talk about a little bit how I kind of fell into that and the future of what we're doing now. And there's also a little other thing called Transact, which I'm a part of too. So I love these things, by the way. Um, so cool. As I said, it's my birthday week. Actually, 20 years ago, this week, <laughs> I got my first computer. And I think I tweeted that out today. And someone was like, how do you remember that? And I was like, because I had an appendectomy the same on my 15th birthday um, 20 years ago. <laughs> I survived, obviously, um, but it stuck in my memory, uh, not only because it was surgery, but uh, it was a defining moment in my life, in my youth. I got, I got a personal computer when they were really expensive, um, and my grandmother uh, put it on her credit card, and like, you know, if she was alive to this day, she was like, I'm still paying it off, because <laughs> that's what she would tell me all the time. Um, but the amazing thing is, prior to getting a computer, like my first kind of introduction with technology was actually gaming. So I'm really excited to be a boss of honor here um, at GamerX, and I'm really excited to be here today because, uh, yeah, uh, my in like again, my introduction into tech was to playing video games. Um, had a Game Boy, kicked ass in Tetris. I was telling Tiffany this morning that I got up to like, you know the level, like, cause it, you just kept leveling up, right? The level where it's just so fast, it's doosh, doosh, doosh. I was like, on it, on it. <laughs> like, I wish I had a Game Boy today. Um, you know, Nintendo uh, was in my house, we had, uh, I was born in 1980, so uh, we didn't have Atari, but it was in the space for some reason. And I remember what, uh, I think it's Pitfall, where you jump on the alligators, is it Pitfall? Yeah, yeah I was right, it's totally Pitfall. Um, and so, <laughs> um, again, gaming was like kind of my first introduction. Um, as my formative teenage years grew, uh, that's when personal computing was like a big deal. You can get a computer, a desktop, a Dell, we had a Dell in our house. Um, we had Adele in our house, that's funny. <laughs> Adele computer um, in our house. Um, and that was in 1995, and it looked exactly like that. It's like, you know, those huge computers with like the speakers on the side, and um, they cost like $2,000, and they were really slow, and used 14.4K modem. Um, I remember that, you dial in, and like you hear the noise. Um, but it really was my, again, moving from gaming to, oh my god, like I have a computer to like the, the, you know, a system that can create games, right? Um, really jumped into the internet, um, kind of like catapulted uh, the past, my past 20 years of life, actually. Um, was introduced to America Online, that's when they were sending out the disc. I don't know how old everybody is in this room. But yeah, mid 90s, we were getting the, the, the CD, the discs, uh, like every week they would send one. And the beautiful thing with AOL was they would let you use it free for a week or a month or something. They would like send you a disc and you put your like, you know, password in and you can continue. So I was always online for free. It's like hacking AOL. <laughs> um, and then there was Prodigy. Um, I also said this today. Um, I love Slack and not saying on Slack, but like AOL was like the original Slack. By the way, it was like, just like you're on it, you have DMs, you have, because it's like a collection of chat rooms. And I thought that was very interesting about how now we're like uh, really creating technology that's kind of uh, building off of old ideas, old, older ideas. Um, so jump from kind of like moving to the, like the chat room space and like Prodigy again, um, CompuServe, um, ICQ. Uh, all those kind of early, early, mid-90s uh, spaces of collaboration um, really helped me to shape my identity and meet other people um, and really, and this, which is not really part of my talk, but come out in a lot of ways um, about my gender and my sexuality um, and things like that. Um, later on in my early 20s, which was like kind of five years after I got the computer, uh, I really was into kind of pre-early blogging. Um, I, I, my uh, co-founder calls me an internet pioneer. Um, I feel like I am because of being a part, like seeing on the trajectory um, and being a part to be in all those spaces. Um, so I had a blog um, years ago called Black Academic and actually I don't, I no longer write on it. People still say, you're a blogger. I'm like, no, I'm not. It's like been years. Um, but I, I, I keep the domain and all the, the whole database and it originally started on Blogger when Blogger was like the premier <laughs> um, web log, it was also called web logging. Um, it was like the premier space to, to blog and like, you know, it wasn't, you, you couldn't really uh, have, you know, you, it was just basic. You could put a blog up and you could have comments on it and it was like, there was Typepad at the time and other stuff, but Blogger was the shit and, but people were figuring out how to hack Blogger and like add plugins to it, become, it was like, 
if you couldn't install WordPress with their infamous five minute install all the time, you could use Blogger, um, but you couldn't have like things like recent comments and things like that on this stuff. Um, so that was actually the moment in my life where I figured out how to do a little bit of programming. Um, all my, everything has been self-taught for me. In my, in my, um, aside from academic, I, I have a traditional academic background, but everything in tech has been kind of like really DIY self-taught. Got a computer at 15 and taken off. Um, but Blogger was really an opportunity for us, to, for myself to learn a little bit more about programming, as well as kind of getting my voice out there uh, in this online collaboration space. Um, and uh, Black Academic won a gang of awards, and it really, it, I, I, I still believe it helped me to get into grad school, because um, it provided me some kind of internet fame. Um, and not to use that like, it's, it was cool, but I leveraged it um, as some kind of social capital to really um, move my uh, career forward um, and help me get into grad school. So those are all like kind of my like moments of, <laughs> of, of how I use technology. Um, and how it was like creating new experience for me through collaboration. Let's fast forward um, to, yeah, so I did this, you know, kind of since then was really about how can I use the internet to, to meet people. So I've kind of been like addicted to technology since then. Um, 2013, uh, at this point, <laughs> I'm missing a huge chunk of my internet life. Um, at this point, I had a successful blog, had really tried out different kind of, really an early adopter of like a lot of kind of platforms and things like that. Um, at this point in my life, I uh, had finished school, I finished a PhD, and I had all this knowledge and all this schooling and all these ideas, um, and was living in the Bay Area um, and defining, calling myself an entrepreneur. And I was like, I'm an entrepreneur, you know. Um, I helped open a brick and mortar shop in Oakland and was like, now what do I do? Um, was really involved in the entrepreneur scene in Oakland and that space because it is, was a few years, 2013, adjacent to San Francisco and didn't, wasn't yet getting like the kind of spill. <laughs> Oakland's so different, <laughs> two years ago. Um, into Oakland, um, you were still able to kind of, I was still able to network with like kind of business owners who own businesses, who own shops, who were um, activists and who were somewhat in tech. Um, and at that moment, I got to also participate in a lot of hackathons. I had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> and I was like, let me do a lot of hackathons. Um, so I was mingling this entrepreneur space and also doing all these, uh, participating in all these tech events, um, primarily hackathons, and was also at a moment in my career where uh, I was deviating a lot from trends advocacy because the past 10 years I was using different types of technologies to bring uh, visibility to trans people. Um, but before that, I was like, well, it'd be really cool if there was like something uh, like a hackathon, the hackathon model for trans advocacy. Um, and a light bulb went off in my head, and I was like, man, that'd be really fucking cool if there's actually like a space where you can come together and really focus on collaboration um, in a way that a lot of trans advocacy work doesn't. I personally think a lot of it is, Janet Mock talks a lot about this, that there's individuals, you become a satellite, um, and you kind of become this voice for a whole community and there's no, you know, you, you, you're kind of siloed and you don't really, you're not really represented as somebody who's connected to part of a larger cause. Um, and I agree. And so I think that I'm always kind of being mindful of how not to replicate things like that that could uh, really be divisive in a lot of ways. And so I was like, well, let's, you know, hackathon model, uh, trans advocacy is really starting to, you know, really come into the, into the mainstream um, how can I like kind of leverage both of those spaces and, and create something that um, was really focused on community building um, and sharing of ideas. And I was like, hackathons are great because they have that model. Um, TransHack was born in 2013. Um, one of the really th cool things about uh, how it was born was not only was it an idea, um, and, and, and just as like, I was like, conceptually to be fucking cool, but I, the way that it was born was through online collaboration. Again, I leveraged <laughs> the, the internet and like the my name on the internet and like the kind of uh, pioneering, pioneering history that I've created to um, my dog starts to whine. She's like addicted to me. <laughs> I'm addicted to her actually. <laughs> it's an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> um, uh, so um, crowdfunding was what launched TransHack. I did a video on GoFundMe, even though they're evil now. Um, did a video and was like, I'm gonna kind of, you know, see if this could take place. And I was like, let me raise $6,000. 
um, which is nothing um, in the tech industry, right? Um, so I was like, that's nothing, let me just raise this. Um, one of the most amazing things with that was that the people who funded, who eventually ended up getting us to the $6,000 mark were trans women in tech um, and cis women in tech. And that was like, <laughs> and that was before I like knew, that was like, I was kind of like, a, I wasn't like really invested in the industry um, as I am now. And so I didn't have any kind of prior knowledge about what, who supports what and like kind of things like that. But that was really actually interesting when I was putting together the ideas for this talk. I was like, oh my gosh, um, the demographics of who actually launched uh, were trans women in tech. Um, so we crowdfunded, it took three months, got $6,000. Trans Hack was born in 2013. Uh, these are the amazing people, part of the people that showed up. Um, it was a very, uh, to use that word, diverse um, group of people held in Oakland, California. Um, I actually received a lot of pushback. People who were helping me plan it were like, why Oakland? Why not San Francisco? And I was like, because I live in Oakland. <laughs> um, I don't want to pay to travel to San Francisco. And it's important for me to be in a space at the time, 2013, um, that supported uh, people of color in, in technology. Um, and San Francisco was, was not happening. So um, no matter how many free spaces we were offered, um, ended up hosting it in a, in a beautiful uh, black owned gallery in downtown Oakland. Um, again, now Oakland has Uber, so it's kind of so weird what happens in like two year span of, not say trans hack brought, <laughs> like none of that, but I'm just saying like, um, to get pushback from the tech, peoples in the tech community, it's like don't have it in Oakland, to now like the biggest company in the world is in Oakland, right? And so, um, it was just really an important moment for me to, I, I really honor TransHack in that, of, of, of being able to exist in a, in a, in a space that's kind of emerging um, as a tech epicenter. Again, we had an amazing diverse group of people. Um, quite a few amazing applications were made. Um, we had like eight apps that were made, which is really amazing because in, in, usually in hackathons, you know, ideas may happen, um, apps may not be made, or you know, uh, but we had actual working things that were, were up for at least a year. Um, and uh, yeah, cool. Um, so uh, I'm sorry. I'm tripping over everything. Um, so we had like eight apps produced in the first one. We then went on to travel. Um, we went to Las Vegas, and that was hella interesting, seeing the, the downtown Vegas tech scene there. Uh, we traveled to Chicago, um, and then we tr our last on-site event was in partnership with Harvard and their innovation lab. And this is us at the innovation lab, um, which is really freaking cool. Um, but the really cool thing about, I think the most important uh, hackathon that we had was TransHack Chicago. It made the most significant impact, I think, in not only with TransHack as a name, but my career, but in the tech industry um, at large. It was at that event that uh, multiple um, other kind of trans uh, tech organizations grew out of. Um, we were featured in uh, Wired Magazine, which is freaking awesome, and uh, a person, uh, Lauren, she made uh, an app called Transgress, and it uh, filters out. It, you know, like when sometimes when you're at schools, or you know, they have like a firewall that you can't access certain certain words. And in a lot of schools and institutional settings, the word transgender is is uh, akin to uh, pornography or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so there's, it's pornographic automatically. Um, um, they created a filter that bypasses that and replaces it with a symbol, and so you can access uh, certain information that's. Probably could have been banned from <laughs> whatever, you know. Um, so really, uh, which still exists, that app is still up, transgress.org. Um, really amazing things have come out of the space of TransHack. Um, and so yeah, we were like getting featured in really awesome tech magazines. Uh, a number of organizations sprung out of it. This is uh, Angelica Ross, she founded uh, TransTech. Um, this is uh, Naomi Cedar, who founded uh, TransCode in the UK. <laughs> this is Riley Johnson, and he, uh, it's the founder of Rad Remedy, which was the first place winner of TransHack Chicago. Um, so they grew to become like now the first uh, technically driven um, org for trans people to locate and rate services uh, uh, for medical providers, which is amazing. And they launched their beta this year, um, and it was just an idea. Um, 
and to see TransHack now grow into different iterations across the world is kind of amazing and very humbling. Um, and I'm uh, excited to have played a uh, part of it. Um, so we've, got, we've made significant uh, impact, again, in the industry as a whole and um, my life in particular, because this is also the moment like, what do I what do? I do? We transact, where do I go? I don't get money. We weren't getting any like funding. It was like basically getting um, event sponsorship, and as many of us know, that's kind of <laughs> difficult. Every time you want to do something, can you like, can someone sponsor me? <laughs> um, so we're like, okay. Um, so Transact Chicago is where I met uh, my co-founder, who uh, was integral to the launching of Dev Bootcamp Chicago, which is where we were um, hosting it. And she was like, I want to build a company. And I was like, I didn't even think that I could be part of something that built company building, right? Um, and she was like, we should work together to build a company. And she pursued my knowledge and, <laughs> and I was really honored and kind of a little bit anxious um, at the moment, but we were like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Um, she comes from a kind of non-traditional education background, and I think that's why we work well together. I was in school for 29 years, what, 26 years of my life, um, a very traditional um, elementary, high school, and higher ed. <laughs> um, and Tiffany um, was very different, um, self-taught, directed learner, um, taught herself uh, taught herself a lot of things, especially uh, engineering, she's a software engineer, um, and again, really pursued me in terms of like, let's get together and build a company because we had, we learned through, uh, she helped co-organize Transact Chicago, we learned through uh, working together um, that we had similar goals, similar values, that we're hard workers, if not workaholics, um, and we made excellent co-founders, um, and that we deserve to participate <laughs> in the tech industry um, as people who are uh, not only adding to the culture through kind of things like uh, not through, through things like such as a trans hack, but um, that we want to create something such as technology. Um, so we're like, okay, what do we do? What's our value proposition? Um, we really started looking at we really wanted to be in the online education, the education space in general. Um, so we were really fascinated with what like General Assembly, Creative Live, and like kind of Lynda.com, this like on-demand education. Um, well, at the same time, we were also fascinated with like platforms that deliver that such as, you know, like, you know, live, liveness that delivered, not just the on-demand education, but then the kind of alternative spaces that produce, uh, that, that support the delivery of that content. Um, yeah, I don't know that was hard to say. <laughs> um, and we wanted to kind of find, like, the in-between, like, how can we be the kind of the meeting ground um, for wanting to provide this education, but also creating technology um, that is somewhat more accessible and definitely more accessible um, and that uh, is built for different types of learning. Um, we found that the, the, the platforms that exist are great, but they're not really focused on people who have you know, different learning abilities. Um, and people like us, I have a learning disability I don't really talk about a lot. Um, because I don't think people would believe me because of my education background. They're like, well, you've gotten so far. Um, but we all learn differently, um, and we all <laughs> engage differently. And so we're, we wanted to become um, a, a company that really addresses that. So we're like, OK, how do we then, um, how do we then leverage the, the work that we've already done, um, the kind of connections that we made uh, through having Transact on site, um, Transact actually became a customer of, of our larger startup, BSM.co, because um, we got some money this year. And we were like, OK, you're a customer. How can we like, actually build something? Um, so we were thinking about all the possibilities. How can we uh, you know, make online education more engaging? And um, we were testing out all these prototypes using technology that already exists. Um, but we were like, how can we put this technology together to make it even better? Um, because it's kind of disparate, right? Um, so this year, earlier, we tested out the idea of virtual conferences. Um, that was earlier this year, right? Early, God, time goes by so fast. It's almost 2016. We tested the idea of virtual conferences. Um, because eventually we're going to like, how do we scale a hackathon and scale a collaboration space um, to go beyond just the, the limitations of on-site? So again, we're like, let's use Transact as a customer to test it out. Um, so we had some virtual conferences earlier this year, and we just used, we hacked together a platform using technology that already exists. We used some Google Hangouts. Um, 
I'm going to point everything out. <coughs> Google Hangouts, uh, this is all, um, uh, we use Twitter widgets, uh, this is uh, a whole company that we use, a uh, uh, chat widget, and, and those are things that already existed, but we put it together in such a way that like, when people came to the platform, they didn't have to download anything, they didn't have to install anything, it was just right on one page. Um, and that's very, it's a very different type of accessibility that we had seen before. We also had um, on-demand live caption. So if you were uh, hard of hearing or wanted to read or whatever situation you were in, you had the ability to see everything that was happening on the screen um, in text format. Um, and it was really freaking cool. <laughs> um, we, and this is actually version two of our version one was like even more basic than this. And then we kind of revamped it and did a version two. Um, and people were really amazed at what we built, and a lot of different interactions were held that weren't that could not be held in an uh, on-site conference such as this. Um, we had speakers from all over the world participate in our first conference, um, and we had a ga engagement from all over at least twenty different countries um, at one time. Um, so that was really freaking cool, um, and it kind of got us to thinking like how then we move forward with, again, building an, on, an on-site space to have uh, virtual collab collaboration with trans people. So, uh, so we're still noodling on that. I'm like, okay. And we're like, okay, now what can we do? Now what can we do? So we built the prototype. Now we're like, okay, how do we then <laughs> take it from prototype to um, actually, you know, uh, seeing our proof of concept in like a working non-production app, but all, you know, just, you know, testing it out again. Um, beyond the MVP, MVP two, I guess. Uh, and so at the same time, we're like, okay, how do we create this technology, but then also continue the goal of, of bringing uh, visibility to trans people um, and trans people in tech. So this past month, I think, was it September? We're in December. Um, I think early November or late October, we launched iBuild4, um, which is a, Again, taking advantage of, of online collaboration, um, hashtags, a social media campaign that's focused on really showing what trans people are building, because I am a trans person who's actually building technology. Um, and we wanted to bypass diversity conversations that are just kind of like, we should get people doing, you know, different people, different brackets to do things. Um, but we're like, okay, now that we have people who are doing certain things, what are, what are they actually contributing to? What is technology are they building? Um, what languages are they using? Um, so we launched iBuild4 late October. Um, and again, it was inspired by the I look like an engineer hashtag that went viral, um, which was really awesome. We didn't want to kind of yeah, jump on that hashtag. Uh, we wanted to, again, show what trans people are building. So we were like, I build for, like I build for trans people, um, whatever you build technology for. Um, we had really great participation online. Um, it's still going, actually. Uh, you go to transact.org slash iBuild4 um, and see people who have participated in and uh, which way the, the, the campaign is going. Um, this past week, we launched a series of online events, social events, um, which again, we're just testing out ideas, um, seeing how different people engage and how different people learn. Um, and one of the really cool things is that we've moved beyond Google Hangouts. <laughs> uh, and we are using um, an app that we actually build ourselves. Um, and it's using in-browser WebRTC videos. And we were like, okay, Twitter chats are really popular. How do we take them to the next level um, and include different types of people? And so we held our first uh, Twitter video chat um, this past Thursday. Um, which is really cool because it was kind of like a Periscope and um, Twitter had a baby, you know, like, and, yeah, and it's all in browser. Um, and these are the founders of Trans Lifeline, um, and they talked about the amazing work that they're doing, um, building a crisis hotline for trans people, and also the technology behind uh, in the behind building a crisis hotline for trans people. Again, we don't really talk about, this is the tech industry, <laughs> we don't really, well, I know we're at a gaming conference, um, but we don't really talk about, I think, again, what transgender people are building um, beyond the kind of surface diversity level numbers that we contribute to the industry. Um, we're gonna have another chat next week on this platform. Um, again, it's designed specifically for trans hack. Every week, uh, I, I build for, 
um, talking about what trans technologies are making. Um, next week we're having uh, the founder of Thirst app, which they're building out an app for trans and queer dating, which is really cool. Um, and they're gonna talk about which tech they're using to do that, how you can help build that, and where they are. Um, so yeah, um, and again, that's just like, well, like, what can we do to like use tools and technology that are out there, but put them together in a way that's uh, very uh, inclusive of, of different types of people. <laughs> The future of TransHack. You know what's freaking cool? There was an article that came out. We did an interview with TechCrunch, and it was like, the future of TransHack. And it was really freaking cool <laughs> that, to see um, that it does have a future. Um, because at some point, I thought it wasn't going to have a future. And that's a whole nother talk. Um, but the future of TransHack. We're really excited to continue to, to think about what online collaboration could be. Um, and again, I'm excited to be at a gamers conference because games are really about like, um, in some ways I think they're about like creating an alternate reality of the world we live in through play. And it's like, I feel like we have this opportunity to be very playful um, and really, and by, and by being very playful, thinking about like the possibilities, uh, that the possibilities are endless, um, that people can connect and come together and create amazing things in, in, in an infinite number of ways. Uh, and we're just trying to like play around with all of that. Um, so again, we, uh, this is kind of our, uh, we are all summer, we were like just building uh, POCs all summer. We're like, okay, how does this look? How is that gonna look? Um, all these different, if we had a Google Docs in it, if we had a real time chat, all these different things, these kind of different ideas. Um, uh, to increase online collaboration. Um, and so we're moving forward, and then with that, we're gonna continue out our I Build Forward chats throughout December um, to eventually build out the platform to host uh, the world's first, because it is gonna be a <laughs> global uh, hackathon for trans people. Um, yeah, and so again, we're gonna focus on making it accessible, make it inclusive, um, make it engaging, um, so that people want to continue to participate together. Um, and make it available to be customized, because again, learning happens very differently with all of us. So, this is how you can get involved. You can um, follow us on Twitter, TransHack, uh, or you can follow our startup, bsn.co. Uh, you can follow me, I am fake rapper. I love, I tweet a lot. I complain a lot on Twitter, but I'm much nicer in person, obviously, as you see. <laughs> <laughs> People are so close surprised, they're like, oh my god, you're not. It's like, cause yeah. Um, or you can send us a note, uh, transact.org, and you know anyone who cares about using online collaboration to change and save lives, um, we you know just follow us and let us know. Um, we love all the support. And now we're in a much better space uh, because when Transact started, it was me. I was doing literally everything, <laughs> like everything. Like you know, I had you had volunteers, but I was like doing everything. And now there are five of us, and it's quite amazing um, how two years can cause such a different, you can make such a, you know, significant impact in the industry and things can change and now the universe is supporting us to do more awesome things and so I think uh, with the platform we're creating, we're super excited to see the direction it's gonna take. Um, and that is my talk today.